delve into uh, matters of the day, you're very much welcome, sir. Uh, we have a new uh, jam policy after the just concluded meeting uh, held recently, and uh, a lot, there have been a lot of mixed reactions with regards to if this should be or not. And we have a new cut of mark, we have a new um, age range for admission into universities, federal universities, state universities, and even private universities. What is your take on this, sir? Well, um, good morning, uh, viewers. Um, let me say that I'm very happy to be here. Uh, yes, of course, for our viewers of SCORE who may not know you, uh -huh. uh, we're now joined in the studio by Dr. Adoyi Mati Omale, who is an educationist and public affairs analyst. Thank you for making time to be in our studio this morning. Yeah, thank you very much. I'm pleased to be here. Um, the question he has asked me is a very, has been a very burning issue uh, since the Minister of Education uh, hinted that um, going forward, only, uh, only uh, students from 18 years will be admitted into the university. So it has been a very contentious issue. Um, but a lot of arguments for and against has been provided by several persons. Uh, my take on that is that um, we are in a, a, a vibrant society, a society that is growing, and um, there is no need to limit um, very good students who can make up the cutoff mark uh, to go into the university at the age of 16. Um, myself, I went into the university at the age of 17, uh, as far back as 20-something uh, uh, years ago. Uh, in the early 90s. Uh, so I see no reason why um, a student of 17 years, for example, should not be able to, be, to go into the university. Um, so to me, that policy is not right. Um, the excuses that um, most of the undergraduate students are immature or do, um, do not, cannot withstand the rigor of university education, to me, is untenable. Uh, so um, I, I will appreciate if that policy is not just only revisited, but it's reversed completely. Uh, because, uh, yes, uh, even if we are talking about 334 system of education, if you have six years of uh, primary school, six years of secondary school, that's 12 years. Uh, so there's really nothing stopping anybody who is... 16, 17 years to go into the university. Well, uh, if you look at it from the angle of maturity, age and maturity, uh, legally, an 18-year-old person is matured enough or is considered an adult to make decisions about voting, to make decisions, life decisions, and even the government recognizes them as adults. Also looking at it from a moral standpoint, don't you think this could be a decision or a policy that is geared towards maintaining the sanity of uh, the, the moral standard in our universities, talking about from the federal universities all the way to private universities, considering the track record of you know, students going into universities and, in quotes, uh, becoming, turning bad? Well, the universal best practice is for adolescents who have the competence to go into the university system. Um, I, I, I know that in the UK, in the US, um, uh, students of 15 years, 16 years can be, can be admitted into the university system. I don't think ours should be different. The most important thing is if the students who are so admitted have the competence, the qualification to be in the university. There's no need to deny them uh, that that privilege or that 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 right uh, to acquire university education. Like I said, there's nothing wrong if you join the university at the age of 16. There's nothing wrong for you to have your degree at the age of 20. There's really nothing wrong with that. So uh, the issue of entering at the age of 18, and then if you are doing a four-year program. You finish at the age of 22. To me, 22 is even late to have an university degree. I personally had my university degree. If it were not as a strike, I would have finished at 20. So um, if as far back as some uh, 25 years ago, uh, that could happen, 
instead of are we moving forward or are we moving backward? Uh, so this the argument about um, undergraduates not being matured to me is not tenable. So the issue of you must not be an adult before you get the university education. University education is different from uh, political uh, enfra enfranchisement of voting, of uh, uh, living on your own, and so on. It's different. Uh, we are talking about uh, we are talking about brain work here now. We are talking about uh, uh, schooling. It's not about uh, whether you you are matured. A, a 15 year old child could also carry out an invention. It does not mean or could 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 uh, uh, formulate theories that even an adult of 40 years uh, cannot. So to me, that argument does not stand waters. However, uh, like I said, there are two sides to it. Yes, I agree that issues of cultism, issues of uh, infantile uh, radicalism, as some people will put it, uh, some, uh, some juvenile traits in some university students, but that is not to say you throw away the baby at the bathwater. That is not to say that, uh, it, like I told you, um, if you start primary school at the age of five years, and you finish um, at the age of 10, and then you go to secondary school at the age of uh, uh, 10 years, and you do six years, junior secondary school and senior school, that's 16 years. Mm -hmm. There's nothing stopping you from going to the university. That's my to, own To graduate thing. at 20. To graduate at 20, or at maximum at 21, depending on the course. If you are reading law, um, which of course is uh, five years, or you are reading medicine, which could be slightly more, uh, so, I, I, I see our priority in the educational system should not necessarily be about age of entry. I don't think the problem with our tertiary education system has to do with the age of entry into the university. I personally don't believe that. There are fundamental issues with the university system, issues of especially public university. And even private university issues of funding, which ASU has been talking about, issues of um, uh, uh, apart from funding, issues of um, effective monitoring of even private universities to conform to acceptable standard. Uh, even the whole concept of JAMB, uh, central admission process, has been criticised. Um, university councils, university management. Uh, could drive the admission process and, and uh, a lot of people have criticized the issue of centralizing uh, the admission process. Uh, the fundamentally, what are the criteria for university education? It's for you to pass your O level. If you pass your O level at 60 years, why would somebody want to deprive you of going into the university? That is my, my take. But uh, if you don't pass at the age of 16, you rewrite at the age of 17. Uh, and then you, 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 can, you can gain entry. Um, I know of people who have wrote jam two times, three times, four times, and are not, and are not able to beat the necessary cut-off mark. And because of that, uh, they spend four years, three years looking for investor admission. So if a 16-year-old boy meets up the criteria and has the requisite O-level uh, credits, why would you want to deny such a child? Well, well, touching on the issue of cut off mark and mm -hmm. how it hampers uh, most some brilliant students from gaining access mm -hmm. into gaining admission into universities, mm -hmm. there is a new cut off mark which is lower than what is obtainable or what used to be obtainable. And it seems like in the last couple of years we have seen a continuous mm -hmm. downward trend with regards to how much marks a student is supposed to get to gain admission into universities. You talked about um, the the other policy about age being a retrogressive one. How about this policy? Is it progressive in your opinion or are we seeing a retrogression in the standard that is being set by JAM? I think um, the major problem with uh, the cutoff adjustment uh, is that the cutoff are set according to the rate of pass or failure of a particular exam. I think that's why JAMP continue to uh, tinker or adjust um, the cutoff mark uh, every year. Um, I, I understand that 
um, this particular year, the failure rate has been very, very high. And because the failure rate has been high, uh, the cutoff has been brought as low as 140. I think that is, is something that should give um, the country uh, cause to worry. Uh, 140 over 400 is really uh, too low uh, to my mind. And I, I, I think um, there are some issues wrong with our secondary education level. If with the introduction of uh, CBT exams, we are seeing that many of the students um, are not meeting up. That is not to say that the entire blame for the failure, mass failure of, um, uh, of those that are taking JAM is attributed um, squarely to um, the poor secondary school system. No. Uh, the JAM exam itself has its own uh, uh, problems, uh, issues of um, the students not adequately being um, sensitized on how to do the CBT exams. That has been raised severally. Secondly, um, failure of equipment, uh, the use of um, uh, uh, centers, uh, CBT centers, mm -hmm. and sometimes the students, they get so exhausted uh, because of one hitch or the other, by the time it's time for the exams, they are uh, not, they, mentally, they are not ready mentally ready to take the exam. There are so many issues wrong with the the conduct of the exam itself. So, um, to me, uh, there are problems with the quality of graduates we are choosing that at the secondary school level. By the time um, we we know that there are a lot of issues with both Waek and Neko. I cannot sit down here and accuse them of uh, of of um, uh, conducting shoddy exams. I will not be fair to them. But we know that there are instances where people write for candidates. There are instances where as somebody, as an educationist, sometimes when I mark scripts or read scripts in the university, I begin to wonder how does this student with so f so much fantastic O level results, uh, maybe A one in English, A one in mathematics, A so, one so in government. Suddenly, falling short so, in the so then, when you read the script, you'll be wondering how did this person make that grade at, <laughs> at secondary school level. So um, so that means there's a problem somewhere. It's either the result um, was not uh, was not the person's result, or something happened along the way, which I can't say. Uh, but uh, with the federal government investigation of um, uh, degree mills, that should also be extended to conduct a WAEC and, uh, and, and, and NECO exam as the case may be because um, one of the reasons for, like I said, one of, I'm not saying that's the only reason, one of the reasons for the abysmal performance in JAMB and, uh, is because uh, the quality of students who are churning out from the secondary school has gone down. Most of the secondary schools um, are only interested in profits. Uh, I understand that some secondary schools pay as much as three million for secondary education. Private, private yes, secondary pri school. private secondary school, and uh, they put them in air condition. They provide some buses. They do all kinds of things. But you see, that is itself is not education per se. Uh, what we want is the knowledge being impacted. But Dr. Dr. O'Malley, uh, in, in this situation where you have private institutions charging millions of naira to, for a student per term, mm. uh, they wouldn't be in such business if our educational system as a country or is particularly good and up to standard. You wouldn't have private secondary schools or private primary schools in every nook and cranny of the country, people who aren't really educationists, but rather businessmen and women trying to make profit off students. Don't you think there is a deficiency with our educational sector? And if you think, yes, there is a deficiency, what measures do you think can be taken to mitigate some of these um, issues? No, um, there's no way government alone uh, with a huge population of 200 million uh, people 
there's no way government alone can shoulder the cost of education at all level. So private sector uh, new, uh, can come in, uh, can come in, put their investment. But the only issue is that the regulatory bodies, the, reg the bodies that are supposed to supervise, monitor, and uh, superintend and ensure that the schools that have been set up meet the minimum um, requirement, uh, government standard uh, should be set. Uh, but you see, you cannot complain because it, government cannot even complain because how is government managing their own schools? So I will tell you without biasing word that uh, despite the shortcomings with some of the private institutions, they are still uh, inch above uh, government run uh, schools, schools. Uh, not with the persistent strikes by the National Union of Teachers, by ASU, by SANU, by NASU, by all kinds of union uh, in public institutions. So um, a, a lot of people um, prefer to uh, send their kids to, uh, uh, to these private institutions. Uh, and let me say something. When the government is talking about 16 years, uh, they are not even factoring the fact that most programs, <laughs> most uh, people who enroll, most students who enroll in university end up spending five years, six years. Um, I graduated from the Amadou Bello University in, I, was, I, I entered in 1990, I was supposed to graduate in 1994 because of the ASU strike in 1994. I had to graduate in 1995. That, that, that is telling you some, some 20 something years ago. And um, it's still on. Uh, people, uh, students who enter the university system have to uh, take longer years and then somebody is talking about 16, 17, 18 years. No, it's not fair to Nigerians, it's not fair to the students. Uh, we should leave, the issues really are not issues of age. If a, if a 16 year old student enter a university and he cannot cope, um, he, 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 he takes his carryover and and, and 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 then repeat the class and so on. So to me, I don't think that is an issue. Our educational system has more serious fundamental issues that we should not be talking about age of entry. Now, for our viewers who are just joining us on the show this morning, we're in the studio with Dr. Adoi Matthew Omale, who is an educationist and public affairs analyst. Our discussion this morning was informed by Thursday, the 18th of July's meeting where the JAM Registrar issued a report on the 2023 admission and 2024 UTME as held at the Body of Benters Auditorium in Abuja, the nation's capital. Much rightly discussed this morning was the viral issue of the admission age requirements to gain admissions into tertiary institutions. But looking at more prospects and impacts of this new JAM policy, mm. parents, caregivers and guardians are also concerned about the validity of JAM. In light with our current economic realities, a lot of persons are suggesting that the validity of JAM be extended so that having bought a JAM form this year and you register and probably have a high cutoff mark are uh, un unable to gain admission owing to the few slots available across major varsities or even colleges of education, can our policymakers make room for an extended validation? There's no, they, they don't have a choice. Uh, they don't have a choice. Like I said, the policy is not only to be revisited, it has to be reversed because it's at the pro progress. It does, not, uh, it does not allow for university autonomy. Ideally, universities should be able to assess those that are admitting. Limiting uh, age limit uh, erodes university autonomy, uni erodes university capacity to assess and admit students that uh, it wants to take into their institution. And that is what um, ASU has always uh, uh, informed government about. Uh, I, I think that um, there are, like I, I have been saying on this program, there are issues that government should dissipate their energy on. Uh, the infrastructural decay in public universities, um, the the the, the 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 laxity in private universities that need to be plugged and then um, the issues of uh, the quality of graduates from secondary at the secondary um, uh, level all these are issues that the, the government has enough work 
to do to ensure that the educational system is sanitized. And uh, talking about age of entry, I don't know where that is coming from, really. Now, Dr. Omale, during this waiting period mm -hmm. where prospective uh, students who are waiting for admission into church institutions are waiting, I, I know some school of thoughts have talked about going through the advanced level. Mm -hmm. We have institutions across the country that offer A-levels. Do you think it's a good suggestion for parents to be able to explore these options other than even if the kid is above 18, rushing them into the university? Do you think they need to have some semblance of what the atmosphere in church institutions would feel like by going into A-level institutions? Well, in the past it used to be so. There used to be... After secondary school, you need to go to um, A level in the past. But you see, like I said, society, one thing about society is constant change. Um, I see no reason why, after spending um, six years in primary school, six years in, in secondary school, um, then you go again into uh, either the IGMB or you go into any other thing before you transit to the university. I, I, I don't think, I don't think, to my mind, I don't think that is really necessary. If you want to do that, you can go and do um, diploma or do some other courses and then you go to 200 level uh, uh, direct entry. Uh, I think these processes are, are already there. But um, that does not mean that for uh, a UTME candidate, um, after you have passed JAM, you have been screened uh, post jam, and then uh, you need to go and do any other A levels. I I personally don't, don't think, think it's that necessary. That, that is necessary. Now, in strengthening this examination, jam is looked at as the umpire mm. that qualifies prospective candidates for gainful admission into church institutions. Mm. But now there have been issues with fake jam results. We all know about the Joy Mesoma incidents that had jam come out to tell Nigerians that this was fake even despite having her parents believing that her result was genuine mm. now they're working in collaboration with NIMSI in using the NIMSI to verify jam results is this a commendable progress in the wheel of works well uh, yes uh, whatever can be done to to enhance the integrity of exam examination is is welcomed uh, we one of the major problem with uh, exam of the jam or WAEC or whatever is the issue of uh, uh, getting mercenaries to to write uh, for some candidates and with the with the example you've given of Mesoma's issue uh, jam should uh, strengthen its mechanisms to identify who the uh, the students who is, are sitting for their exams are. so to me it's a commendable process anything that can enhance the integrity of uh, the exam process uh, is, is welcome so that we can avoid uh, issues that can give us a, a national embarrassment. Um, because of this type of uh, issues that crop up within our educational system, uh, some countries even fail to recognize the, our graduates and, and um, many of them have to take some other exams before they are absorbed into some some systems, so um, so everything has to be done to um, enhance the integrity of not only JAM but all exams um, within the country. Well, looking at um, Lagos State now, uh, the Lagos State Commissioner for Tertiary Education, Mr. Uh, Tani Sule, has said that. Uh, the Lagos State Government has implemented an automated system to ensure seamless implementation of some of these policies to ensure that no student goes into the university that is below 18 and you know some of these other policies that have been discussed in as much as some of these automations are being made how much safer can we make our tertiary institutions for students going in because from track record we know that the issue of cultism is a menace that has bedeviled tertiary institutions in the country. Also, these cultists target newbies in the universities, youngies who, who are freshmen coming into the system. They target them, they recruit them, and it's a continuous circle, a vicious circle of reputation over and over again. How can we make our universities safer? 
Okay, I <laughs> fortunately I was a student union uh, president at Amadou Bello University. So I, on issues of cultism, I have a lot of uh, knowledge or experience to talk about it. Um, it is not because somebody who is 16 years entered the university that is why there's cultism in, in universities. If anybody who have that belief is very, very erroneous. Um, if adults in their 40s and 50s <laughs> are belonging to Freemasons and Illuminati and so on, <laughs> it doesn't mean that uh, uh, just because somebody entered the university at 16 years, then, uh, then that is why uh, he could be recruited into court or not. So I, I don't think that argument doesn't hold waters. Uh, at 18 years, you could still be you could still be recruited <laughs> into a cult. Uh, I don't think those uh, are, are the key issues. But 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 the the, the, the major top, the major issue here now is no longer the age. It is the safety of these uh, universities. How safe are our universities? How much security can be guaranteed for students who are even 25, 30? There are students who are there yes. That is the point. That is the point I'm making. That the age of entry really does not um i i don't i've not seen any statistics uh, where uh, it is uh, where, where where it is alluded that um it is because uh, people uh, students gain entry at very young age that uh, they are being attracted to cultism I, I i i i strongly believe that that is a very erroneous uh, uh insinuation um Courtists can be 25 years, they can be 30 years, they can be 18 years, they can be 17 years, whatever age. Uh, anybody who wants to belong can belong. Anybody who doesn't want to belong will not belong. So I, 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 I don't think the solution to that, but on the issue you have raised about security, Nigeria generally will have security challenges. It's not just about uh, the, the security challenges we are having. It's not just about uh, universities. We have had instances where secondary school students are, are, are taking 200, are taken from school and, and abducted and so on. So it's a general problem. It's not peculiar to um, university system. Uh, what I will say is that the security agencies, the university management, the school management, everybody, all hands have to be on deck to protect uh, as the students uh, from harm and um, but I think the more argument for the issue of age is not necessarily about cultism um, the, 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 the immaturity that they say some undergraduate student display in school maybe being rude to consider authority maybe the way they dress the way they, they sack their jeans and so on and so forth their general conduct with the term as immature. Uh, I don't think <laughs> in, in the 21st century we should be talking about that. Now, Doctor, let's talk about more on the prospective UTME candidates. Mm. Now, JAM has also launched its Equal Opportunity Group to cater for persons living with disabilities. You also cited some of your concerns in your earlier comments based on the CBT mm. centers and the use of technology in jam under this new policy mm. do you think that there can be better inclusion for those who are visually impaired owing to the fact that these exams are computer based yes i i i have always advocated that um for uh, for visually impaired or disabled uh, students their cutoff mark may not they should be have a separate cutoff mark uh, to for for those category of persons because you cannot be giving an exam uh, to people who are disabled either somebody who is blind or somebody who is deaf or somebody who um, have one uh, disability or the other you cannot be assessing them at the same level with people who are complete so if for example the cutoff mark for um, for others is 140 uh, people with disability can 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 be can be given admission at 100. That's my own uh, uh, that's my own advocacy, uh, so that uh, they could also be encouraged. Because 
Um, if we do not encourage those with disability, um, uh, we, we might not be integrating them enough into society. Just like uh, when you are consulting a building, you have to also take uh, note of uh, areas where they can also pass. Um, we should also encourage uh, a lot of them so that some of the stigma associated with disability can, can also be downplayed. Uh, also, um, uh, I am aware that there are special centers, uh, jump centers or exam centers for those that are, uh, might be uh, impaired. But again, um, some of the facilities, are they really working? Are they really um, are they are they performing to optimum to 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 to, uh, to address the needs of those category of persons? So um, we need to do a lot in that regard, especially in the university system, and not just that. When they are admitted, what are the learning instruments? What are the learning equipment that have been put on ground um, to 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 take care for these special needs people? Um, their lectures must not be in line with the conventional lectures. They have to be taken very special. Uh, their, their, their peculiarity also need to be factored into um, uh, the system. So all these are, are very, very important. And um, I, I, I'm always very passionate about assisting people with disability um, to acquire university degrees. And uh, in most convocation that I attend, I, 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 I feel very, very happy when I see uh, people graduates who are with disability. With disability. We have a little less than five minutes as we look to close this discussion. Mm -hmm. And my last question to you would be from the angle of the quota system, vis-a-vis -vis some states that have now been ranked owing to the JAM registrar's reports as low-scoring states. How do we better shape this quota system to accommodate more prospective students who are seeking tertiary education? Well, uh, the issue of quota, zoning, it has been a very, very contentious issue in this country. But I want to be very, very fair. One of the major problems with the Nigerian system is this issue of uh, quota. Now, um, I am of the firm belief that if you say the admission criteria, you must score up to 280, or in this case, 140. I see no reason why anybody that scored 120 or 130, uh, you will give them admission on the basis of quota. That is not fair. If we are talking about fairness, uh, uh, some of these quota policies will have to be revisited. Uh, I am somebody that I believe merit should always uh, uh, take precedence. But in admission, I know that there are always merit lists. I know that there are always me uh, merit lists uh, where those who really pass the exam uh, are given their uh, admission on the basis of merit. Then I am also aware that there are quota lists uh, and all kinds of balancing, VC lists and so on and so forth. But um, I would have been happier if everything is done on the basis of merit. merit. Uh, uh, if we say that, uh, if we say that the cutoff mark is A, all those that get A, as much as possible, should be given the admission. Uh, the issue of uh, educationally disadvantage, balancing, and so on, shouldn't arise in the Nigeria of today. Uh, the, we all have the same brain. God gave all, all of us the same brain. Yes, if it is some 30, 50 years ago, I can understand. But the level of development that the country has attained now, um, I think that some of these policies has to be abolished. If there should be other incentives to states that you might think are disadvantaged, there could be other incentives to motivate the students, uh, like school feeding issues in such states, like issues of um, uh, scholarships, 
and several other things that can motivate uh, some of those so-called disadvantaged states uh, to, 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 to meet up. But giving quota uh, slots at, at, at this point in time of our development, I think should be abolished. Well, we must thank you, Dr. Omali, for your time on the program this morning. Mm. This is as much as we can take on this discourse. We appreciate you. Thank you very much, and uh, thanks for having me. Mm.